Images from Mariner 9 revealed that these structures were the tops of huge volcanoes. One volcano, Olympus Mons, is the tallest in the solar system. On November 14, 1971, an unmanned probe called the Mariner 9 arrived on Mars in the midst of a massive dust storm. As the clouds cleared, images revealed a gigantic discovery about a magnificent mountain that later rose above other forms. If people were asked to identify the tallest mountain on the planet, the majority would say Mount Everest, and they would be correct, at least if we referred to the tallest mountain above sea level. Keep in mind, though, that mountains can also be measured from their base to their peak, and Everest's base is located on the Tibetan Plateau, far above sea level. When you look at the tallest known mountain here on Earth, Mount Everest is only about 8,850 meters tall. But there are many more soaring mountains out there, and one of them can be found on our nearest planetary neighbor, also known as the Red Planet, Mars. It was in 1972 when a volcano was photographed on the surface of Mars, and it stands high above other mountains in the area. Later, the volcano was named Olympus Mons, which is Latin for Mount Olympus. It is known that Olympus Mons dominates the western Martian landscape. At about 21,000 meters in height, its height is almost unimaginable. For you to have an idea as to how tall this mountain is, its height more than doubles the size of Mount Everest. When it comes to its width, it's about 624 kilometers, making it the largest volcano in the solar system. In fact, this volcano is roughly the size of Arizona. It's almost impossible to think of just how enormous it is. Looking at the climate of Olympus Mons, it is said that the width of the hot atmospheric region is between about 300 and 420 kilometers. That is a temperature contrast of around minus 233.15 degrees Celsius between the surface and the hot ring. What is most interesting about this wonder of space is that it is a relatively young mountain. In fact, it's even the youngest volcano in our solar system. This is based on geological estimates, and there is also a possibility that it is still active and could erupt at some point in the future. As a result, Olympus Mons can grow even more significantly as fresh lava flows to the surface and then cools. What we know is that Olympus Mons, like other shield volcanoes, was formed when lava slowly oozed out of the ground and spread out, giving the mountain a broad, square profile. Since shield volcanoes typically have a slope of only 5%, Olympus Mons's height stands out even more. It is implied that Olympus Mons's massive size results from Mars's low gravity, slow-moving tectonic plates, and high volcanic activity. And did you know that renowned Italian astronomer Giovanni Schiaparelli was one of the many people who first became interested in Olympus Mons? He spent a lot of time in the 19th century gazing and studying Mars via his telescope. He did, however, discover a light patch that he called Nix Olympica, which is Latin for Olympic snow, while making his observations. He mistakenly believed that it was the summit of a sizable mountain, but after a century had passed, it became clearer what Schiaparelli saw through the lens of his telescope. It was none other than the massive volcano Olympus Mons. So, what Schiaparelli found was not just the summit of a mountain, but a massive volcano that stands tall above the mountains in the solar system. We know that Mars is home to massive and impressive volcanoes, but it is unclear whether they are volcanically active. Let's take a stroll and learn about its volcanic features. If you're looking for a place to go on Mars, one interesting place for astronauts to explore might be near these lava tubes. The majority of Mars's volcanism occurred between 3 and 4 billion years ago, leaving enormous landmarks such as Olympus Mons behind. Prior research suggested that smaller volcanic eruptions may have continued on Mars 2.5 million years ago. 
Scientists have discovered evidence that Mars is still volcanically active, with an eruption occurring within the last 50,000 years or so. In 2021, a study suggested that Mars may still be volcanically active now, despite being active in the recent geological past. The study claims evidence of what could be the youngest eruption ever observed on Mars. The new discovery also helps scientists better understand Earth's geological processes. The parallels between the two are numerous. Mars is mostly made up of iron, nickel, and sulfur. It also used to have a strong magnetic field, water, and a thicker atmosphere. However, if there is still enough heat beneath the surface for magma to form, Mars may yet have life. According to an international team of scientists, data from NASA's InSight lander shows that Mars is volcanically active beneath its surface, with pockets of hot magma. This is intriguing because Mars is a potentially habitable planet next to Earth. But a little disclaimer, we have been trying to prove this speculation, and as of today we are still searching for some answers. In the meantime, we can only imagine all sorts of possibilities like perhaps reaching the highest summit of the solar system. There are a lot of mountaineers who pride themselves on climbing Mount Everest, and they've shared their stories about how they did it. But have you ever wondered what it would be like to climb the highest mountain in the solar system? Is it as difficult as climbing a mountain on Earth? Or is it so much easier than we anticipated? Well, let's find out. Although Olympus Mons is exceptionally tall, it is said that its base is wide, having a diameter measurement of about 624 kilometers and 25 kilometers high. Therefore, it is about 412 kilometers from the foothills to the summit. With this feature, the slopes of the volcano are extremely mild, and given the gravity of Mars, you wouldn't even realize you were walking uphill. Therefore, this would not be a climb, but rather a several-week-long stroll. It is also less hassle than climbing a mountain on Earth, since you do not need to carry much mountaineering equipment. For this mountain, a pair of comfortable sneakers will suffice, or rather a spacesuit with comfy boots. Now that we have discussed what kind of journey we will go through when we climb Olympus Mons, we also have an idea of the gear we will use for climbing. So, the next question is, what will welcome us, or what do we see when we get to the top of it? Since it is so tall and massive, and Mars is so much smaller than our planet, its base would be beyond the horizon. Thus, we cannot see much from the top, but rather a view of its flat terrain. The same is true when looking up at the peak from the foothills. Despite its incredible height, the peak is beyond the horizon. Therefore, there's nothing much to expect compared to what we see when climbing mountains here on our planet. So, the top view is not like what you see on Earth. Given that there is not much to see on Mars, just flat terrain, unlike when you reach a mountain peak on Earth where you will be rewarded with a magnificent view of greenery from above. But Let's not disregard the idea that climbing a mountain on Mars is just as rewarding as being the first man to reach the moon. I mean, it's Mars, so it's worth the climb. Imagine for a moment that Earth is home to the highest mountain in the entire solar system. What would take place in the event that this actually happened? Since it is twice as tall as the typical cruising altitude of planes, it would act as a barrier for planes. Aside from this, given that its size is like the area of Arizona, it would be a waste of land mass. This would reduce the resources we could cultivate towards that region. However, because the mountain is so gigantic and due to its higher elevation, large amounts of snow and ice would cover portions of the volcano. The size of the mountain would also obstruct weather systems and the jet stream, which would lead to significant changes in the weather. The mountain shadow would also cause a large portion of the planet to experience significantly longer nights. Apart from this, if it were to be submerged in water, the mountain's total volume would have a sizable effect on the water level. 
We are worried about increases of an inch over the course of the next century here on Earth, but that would be nothing compared to the change in sea level that would be caused by Mount Olympus. As a result, a significant portion of the Earth's surface would lose its capacity to support human habitation.